first lecture video, if you were able to print out, you can take notes with me. If not, just use binder paper. It'll still work. Um, so we're going to start off the beginning of the textbook, the two different types of statistics called descriptive and inferential. Um, these are like branches of statistics, so kind of branches off into two directions. Um, so we'll start with descriptive. Um, descriptive would be methods for summarizing or describing data. You've probably done this before, you just maybe didn't call it statistics. Um, and it's just to make it easier to read and understand, um, describing the collected data. So things like graphs are summarizing data, right? It makes it easier to read as a graph. A table makes it easier to read because it's organized in a nice order. Even calculating an average is a summary. Um, there's lots of things you've probably done. And so we'll get into this in the early chapters of the textbook, um, doing descriptive statistics. Right now we're just kind of doing an overview of what's to come. Um, so within descriptive statistics, we have, or even inferential, um, we have a population and a sample. Um, a population is basically an all or an everyone type of idea. Um, it's the group of people that we're making conclusions about. So that could be like all of Chabot, all of the US, all of California. Um, but in real life, we often can't collect data from everyone. So we collect this thing called a sample. So this is part of the population that's important in which you actually collect your data. And again, we'll get into all this as we go through the class. This is just a preview of what's to come. Um, the other type of statistics is called inferential. Um, We'll get into this in the later half of the class. We really have to practice some descriptive to even lead to this. Um, but this is when we draw conclusions about a population. So conclusions about all of Chabot or all of California, even though we only have information from a sample. Um, so we're basically inferring, right? We're making conclusions about a bigger group. So we're inferring information about a whole based on just a part where the whole is the population, but we've only collected data from a sample. So the easiest example to think of that is relevant right now would be like election polls, right? They probably didn't survey you, but they did survey a sample and made a conclusion about the whole US. And we'll see lots of examples as we go through the semester. Um, so some quick examples of the difference. If I just asked all of you your age um, and I calculated your average, um, you're the sample and the population, right? Because I'm describing all of you. So you're the population and the sample, um, right? Because you're all, you're everything, right? I've, been able to interact with everyone. So the sample and the population are the same here. And so this is just a descriptive study because I'm describing the class. I'm not making any bigger conclusions, just describing you as a class. But if instead I take you as a class and then I make a conclusion about all stat students at Chabot, right now you guys are only a sample, not the population and it would be inferential because all stat students are now the population. So we're making a conclusion about a bigger group. So that's the big difference. So just a few more vocab for today. It doesn't feel like math, I know. Um, we don't really get into the numbers until a little bit later. So when we do do our statistical investigations throughout the semester, um, we usually begin with a research question. Um, and a research question is usually some sort of population that we want to know about. Um, a population can be people or things. So when someone says, has a research question, what percent of US dentists recommend mouthwash? The population is then all dentists. But it should make sense that we're probably not asking every single dentist when we answer this question. Um, do cell phones affect bees? 
right? We're not gonna go and collect every single bee in the entire world, but we'll get a sample of bees and make a conclusion about all bees and see if cell phones affect them. Uh, another thing, it doesn't have to be an animal or a, a person. Do cars get better gas mileage with a new gasoline additive? Um, Right? We're not going to, again, put this gas additive in every single car. We're going to take a sample of cars and make a conclusion about all cars. And does this gas additive help them? So right, most of the time, these populations are very large groups, as we saw above. And so it's very large that we cannot collect data from every individual. And so that's why we'll collect samples. So let's look at um, statistical studies and kind of see, are they inferential or descriptive? And look at the samples in the populations. Um, so we have a researcher interested in the milk production of dairy cows. She measure, measures the volume per day of 40 cows. So that'll be significant from various farms around the country. And then now she wants user data to estimate the average milk production of all dairy cows. So are the 40 cows a sample or a population. So I would say they're just a sample, right? 40 cows doesn't represent all cows. So it's only 40 cows. And then the population is then all the cows that we're making conclusions about. So it'd probably just be all dairy cows here. And so since we're making a conclusion about a bigger group, the type of statistics would be inferential. And then feel free to ask me questions through email um, or use our groups. Um, but if you have questions, write them down in your notes right now so that you can ask me immediately after. Just have a couple more examples in this video. Um, so a car salesman works on commission and wants to state his monthly income during the last year for a credit card application. Um, so his income varies greatly month to month, right? When you earn commission, you might do really well one month and not so much the next month. So he decides to use the average of the 12 months. So are the 12 months the population or just a sample? So in this case, since he's only describing the last year, the 12 months would be the entire population. All right, we're not describing two years or three years or four years, we're only describing this year. And so since we're only describing the current year and we have all of the months, this would be descriptive statistics. Right, we have data for all 12 months. We're just describing those 12 months. So the key to each of these problems is to consider whether you're st stating a conclusion about the group you collected data from. Right? If you're only describing the sample and it happens to be the entire population, so like the 12 months, right? That was the entire population. Even though it was a sample, right? The sample represented the whole population. Um, if you're describing a bigger group, right? Your sample is not the whole population. Then you're using inferential statistics. Um, so I just have to finish up this page and I'll end our first video. Uh, so a manufacturer has built a new SUV and needs to estimate average gas consumption for city driving. So they go ahead and test 45 vehicles in city driving conditions. All right, so they're curious, how is the gas mileage in the city? Um, so the population is who we're making estimates about. So um, if we're going to estimate average gas consumption, we're probably talking about every single one of these SUVs. So the population would be um, all of, all of the new hybrid SUVs, whatever SUV this is. Whereas the sample is only the ones we tested, so that would be the 45 tested SUVs. So hopefully we're seeing the difference, right? Populations are big groups and samples are smaller groups. Almost like fractions, right? A sample is a part and a population is the whole. Um, so let's see what kind of conclusions we make. 
So conclusions and statistics, it's not just about collecting data, but can we make good conclusions with this data? Um, so a gambler observes 100 plays of roulette. Roulette, you could Google it really quickly. It's like this um, wheel, and it has like red and black spots, and we a wall, ball goes around and lands on them, and then there's two green spots. So it's kind of up to chance, like where the ball lands. Um, so the gambler noticed that the ball lands on red 48% of the time. So it, we can make this descriptive or we can make this inferential. So descriptive is essentially only describing what happened. So I think writing conclusions helps us see the difference. So for the 100 plays of roulette, or let's say the 100 plays observed, right? Because he observed 100 plays. So we're only describing those 100 plays, nothing more, nothing less. Uh, the ball landed in the red slot 48% of the time, right? We're just describing what the gambler witnessed. Um, inferential, now we're going to make a conclusion about all of roulette. So we're going to make it a bigger conclusion. So based on the 100 plays observed, right, we're no longer describing only them, we estimate that the ball will land in the red about 48% of the time. So now we're saying what will happen in the future. Right, we think this is for all games of roulette now. So that's the difference. Descriptive is describing. Inferential is then all, right? Making a bigger conclusion. We only witnessed 100, but we make a conclusion about all. So let's try one of these from scratch. If you're feeling confident, maybe pause the video and see if you can write your own sentences here. And then come back. Uh, but once you come back, I'll write these conclusions. So we take a sample of 39 homes, so that's my sample, with five or more bedrooms in Malibu. And then we found the average price was 6,282,692,000. Right, Malibu is very expensive, and five bedrooms is huge. Um, so descriptive, again, is just describe. We're not talking about all of Malibu, we're only, only these 39 homes. So... Um, the average price, not really even writing anything new. I'm kind of writing what's already been stated because we're just describing what happened. The average price for these 39 homes, I might add details, five bedrooms or more. I'll say five plus bedrooms in Malibu was... 6,282,692, right? Descriptive, describing. Nothing, not anymore, um, only those 39 homes. If we want to make it inferential, now we're talking about all five plus bedrooms in Malibu. That's the big difference. So descriptive is only those homes, and inferential is now all. So the difference here is based on those 39 homes, um, the average price of a five plus bedroom in Malibu, right? Notice I'm talking about all five plus bedrooms in Malibu now, is about six million. 282,692. And that's it. We made it through our first video. So let me know if you have questions. If you do have questions, ask them right away because otherwise you might forget. Um, I recommend as you take notes, if a question comes up, pause the video, write that question down and highlight it. Anything so that you remember to ask. Um, treat it like it is an in-person class, right? You would ask questions on the spot. So just try to ask them as soon as possible. Um, so yeah. Continue through the module and let me know if you have questions.